The pitch from Acevedo. A drag feet to right field. Down the line. The Mariners win this game 2-1. The dream lives. They're going to the playoffs. One more from Gant. There you go. Left field. We got a tie ball. All right, day five, well, for TJ, day three. Is it feeling like Groundhog Day yet? No. Well, I don't think so. Can you so. see your shadow, dog? Can you see your shadow? I see mine right over there. It feeling too good to be Groundhog Day. I mean, Groundhog Day is supposed to be miserable. This isn't miserable. We're in Arizona. Look at the sun. Feel the sun on my face. No, it's way too much fun. We're having way too much fun. I think we're going to talk to Cal Raleigh today. He said yesterday he should have a little more time. There's a few other things we've got planned today. Again, we never want to promise everything we're going to be able to do because schedules can obviously get crazy. But we think today's going to be a pretty fun day with stuff we're going to do. Yeah, it should be. It should be a good day. We're going to also try and get all of our guys today. I think today is an emphasis everyone we've had on the podcast is also now getting on getting on the mini mic interviews today all of them yeah. let's make that a goal yeah so that would be gabe spire taylor saucedo sam haggerty taylor trammell ty adcock so most of those guys we haven't gotten on the mini mic yet we've been trying to get some other guys because we figured well those guys will do it at some point right but with two days left we're like we should probably get those guys before we completely run out of time so that is a goal for today obviously a goal to talk to cal Raleigh today and we'll see what else we can do Okay, it is just past 9.30. The players are out and working out. We just heard from Scott Service on this third day, Gregory Santos. Uh, they still don't know if he's ready for opening day. They liked what they saw from him in this first bullpen. 15 pitches, it sounded like, all fastballs. He did let one sinker rip there at the end. His only pitch with actual movement, 97 miles an hour. So good to hear. Sounds like he's in good spirits. Yeah, and opening day is still TBD, but he's progressing in the right way. Certainly, he'll throw another bullpen, it sounds like, in the next few days. Also, another day, another A-plus conversation with Ryan Divish today, including how Wayne Tinkle, Oregon State head basketball coach, down in Corvallis, where TJ works, uh, they used to throw Ryan Divish to the ground when they played pickup basketball together. Like, just would take him from when he'd go up for a rebound or something, he'd grab him and throw him down. <laughs> I mean this with all the respect in the world, quite the height difference between the two. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just a little bit. I'm shocked Ryan went up for a layup against Wayne Tingle. That's that's honestly surprising. Yeah. But a, another A plus conversation yeah. indeed. There was there was yeah. that. There was him being in Vegas and just getting pissed off watching Oregon State basketball, all that stuff. I mean, he's he is the best. The whole MLB network crew is here today we're gonna attempt to try and talk to greg amsinger jonathan mayo meet some people it's sunny it's warm vibes are good fans are out let's get it let's go let's talk to some players too Well, it's about noon now. All the big leaguers are off to Milwaukee. We're, uh, we're wandering here on the backfields, taking a peek at, I think, some live batting practice from the minor leaguers. Some good ones today. We got, uh, we got Cole Young. Cole Young, I will say, undersold himself just a little bit on his uh, JV baseball home bit. run total. Just a little bit. I think he's, he's, he'll, he'll, he'll be surprised by the results when he actually gets into a JV baseball game and starts hitting. But great stuff, as always, from Taylor Saucedo as well. Samad Taylor, Taylor Trammell, yeah, everybody was great today. So we got a decent amount of guys. We're heading over to the minor league side, going to check out some stuff over here, because like we, we keep saying it, it's really fun to go over to the minor league side. All right, that basically wraps up day five for TJ day three. Mariners are on the road again. So it's about 1.30 and we're walking over to get some lunch. Takeaways from today are, Cal Raleigh really undersold his home run total. This dude said 10 home runs against JV players. If you were to go back today and play in a JV baseball season, how many home runs would you hit? 10, maybe? 10? 15? I don't know. You're a big leaguer. I don't know, you know. It's too slow pitching. Maybe it might really? Be, really? Pitching might be too slow. I'll say no. the rule is no intentional walks. I have such a hard time hitting off slow pitching, like when a position player comes in, so 
I'm actually 0 for my career when a position player comes in, so that's what I probably equivalent JV pitching to be like. So yeah, okay, I'd so be too slow. I wouldn't hit it. So you hit a home run off of them first, and then we'll rethink the JV baseball question once you get there. Yeah, once I get a hit off a position player, then you guys can come back and ask me. Okay. Maybe I might have a better gauge for that. Yeah, ten. So I'll hit thirty last. Year. So let's fill you in. So. After we talked to the first few guys we were talking about, we waited around for a little bit of the late morning, a little bit into the early afternoon, because there are some stragglers even when there's big league games on the road. Because when that happens, not everybody plays, and the starters that aren't playing usually hang back at the facility and all that, and are kind of doing their own thing. They're getting some work in, all that stuff. So we waited around. Cal came out. Again, he said yesterday, oh, I'll have some more time tomorrow being today. When we asked him, Cal being the very good guy that he is, is he said, yeah, like I'll do it. And then he gave some very funny answers. Credit to TJ for kind of grilling him on some questions. When that comes out, you'll have to check it out. But Cal was awesome. Yeah, Cal was really good. Got to talk extended time with Cole Young too after his uh, his little social media clip. Apparently, he's seen our TikToks. Yep. Look at that, Cole Young, a viewer of the Marine Layer Pod TikTok channel. We'd love to see it. Let's go. Mariner's number one prospect, Marine Layer Pod viewer. Really good dude. We hadn't talked to him before. Didn't get him at all last year. Enjoyed talking to him when we got him today. Overall, really good day. Got a bunch of guys. Like we said, we had a fun conversation with Ryan Divish. Got to meet Greg Amsinger and Chris Young from MLB Network. That was super cool. I have been watching MLB Network religiously since I was in high school. Probably a freshman in high school. And Greg Amsinger was always my favorite host on the network. I thought he was so outgoing, so personable, got the best out of players. Like I watched a lot of him and a lot of Jared Carabas as two people who I tried to kind of take some inspiration from for when we do our content in our interviews, just truly be ourselves. And when we met Greg in person, awesome. Last thing for me, Taylor Saucedo again, <laughs> continues to be just unmatched. You'll have to stay tuned to our social channels to check that out. But he brought the fire. That was probably the most I've laughed for an interview so far. If you could hit against any position player on this team, who would it be? I feel like I would hit off Rojas. I think I would take him deep, no doubt. Probably like 475. <laughs> You know, maybe even if I, even if he serves one up, I might even put one up there with Ted Williams because that's real. So yeah, that totally happened. Yeah, yeah, definitely. His thing now with me for some reason is always like uh, he's like it's it's over the ball, it's not under the ball. So he's kind of always giving me like pitching tips for some reason. Yeah, there might be some parts of these interviews that we have to cut small parts out of because either TJ or I, who was recording in the background let out some laughs. Sauce just continues to be the best. You guys all know he's a fan favorite for a reason. The answers he gave for pretty much every question we asked were hilarious. So shout out to him. Really fun day five. One more day coming up. We're going to be sad to leave, but on day six and the final day, we're going to try to make it as good as we possibly can. Get a bunch more guys. We're going to try to get Jerry Depoto. We don't want to promise we're going to get him, but we have a very cool idea if he'll agree to do it. So stay tuned tomorrow. Final day of spring training coming up going to try to get a lot done. We'll see what we can do. Okay, here we are checking in on our final morning of spring training, taking a walk to the backfields. A couple notes from Scott Service today. Ryan Stanek is here, and according to Gabe Spire, an enormous human being. Uh, we have not physically seen him yet, but we will uh, confirm. You know what? Funny enough, TJ has not seen him yesterday in the clubhouse. I forgot to say it. I saw him in there. He was talking to a couple of the guys. He had just gotten in. He was in street clothes, but haven't seen him today. I briefly saw him yesterday, but that is going to be, like we've talked about, a really, really fun arm to add to the pen. Unfortunately, Jackson Coar is getting Tommy John. That really sucks. It looked like he had a chance to bounce back with some of his stuff, but he's going to be out for the year. Obviously, nothing but the best recovery for him, recovery-wise. Last thing we learned today, we saw Brash throwing from about 60 feet on field one yesterday. Today, Scott Service said he's going to go up to 90 feet. I assume he's feeling good, so... After 90 feet, he'll probably long toss, and then he'll get back on the mound. So that's good news to hear. Uh, good news to hear from Scott Service today. That is phenomenal news. Again, this bullpen is great already. Obviously, there's a bunch of dudes back there, but Matt Brash is so vital. Matt Brash is not any old reliever. You're talking about maybe the nastiest dude in baseball. And if you're going to rank relievers, man, it'd be hard to get past five or six without having his name on that list. So to have him healthy and to have him working back his way toward full health, Big, big sign. Also, we were just at the minor league fields. They were practicing bunt drills. That is the last time I ever want to see Lazaro Montes drop down a bunt. As two anti-bunters here, like the two of us are, if you listen to the podcast, you know that, Lazaro Montes should be spending no time in his career ever dropping down bunts. I want to see that guy hitting 450-foot tanks, yeah. not, not two-foot rollers. 
Last thing we've noted from camp today so far, we ran into the Bat Boys, super cool. They have an awesome presence online, YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok. They do some fantastic stuff. They're here in Peoria today. They're trying to track down some Mariners players as well. Awesome couple of guys. Yeah, Liam, Eric, they're in their early 20s. They built up this huge platform. They do an awesome job. Shout out to them. They were super cool when we met up with them today. All right, so we were back in the big league area for a bit. We're heading back over to the minor league side to see what's going on over there once again. Guys, it's been a busy morning. Let's not even bury the lead. We got Jerry. Yeah, we got We Jerry. got him. <laughs> How well does Jerry DePoto remember his own trade history? How many have you made total in your time with the Mariners? There have been a lot. Do you have a guess? Only because we just did something of a five-year audit since we started our our rebuild program, I'm going to say about 150. That was close. You're at 164. It seems like a lot. There's an actual Google Doc out there of people that track it. Shout out Cespedes Family Barbecue. <laughs> that was sick. We flagged him down. We said, hey, we want to quiz you on some of the trades you've made. It'll be easy. It'll be lighthearted. Are you up for it? He was up for it. He was awesome about it. It was a bunch of fun. That is going to be a really cool one when we post it out on social media. So when we do, Stay tuned for it, because that was a bunch of fun. What a group of big leaguers we got today, too. We got to talk to our guy, Gabe Spire, caught up with Sam Haggerty, got to talk to Cole Tucker for the first time, Emerson Hancock stopped by, and then to finish it off, Bryce Miller, awesome as always. So he, uh, on his day off, stopped by and uh, had a nice chat. Be sure to stay tuned to our social media channels and catch all that content. Those guys are all awesome. Yeah, we we're trying to do a lot today, obviously. With it being our last day, it's a bunch of guys we haven't gotten yet trying to put in a lot of time so far so good we'll see what else we can do all right let's go uh check out the minor league fields and let's see what's up back here well that trip to the backfields was worth it we just talked to felonine celestin that. and las montes wow that. Oh my God, that was cool. What four celebrities do you most want to watch you play baseball? LeBron James, Drake, Kevin Durant, and Stephen Curry. Do you have a favorite song by Drake? One Dance. One Dance. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> that was sick. So we did a little bit of content with Laz at the end of the regular season last year up in Seattle. So that was awesome. We talked to him a little bit during the week, but we actually did some content. So that was a bunch of fun. And Fel named Celestine. But nobody's talked to him. Nobody's gotten to know much about him. So to just get to introduce ourselves, to ask him a couple questions, we got a few laughs out of him. Really good dude. And also watching him hit on that backfield. He yeah. can swing it for his age. Be excited about Felnine. You probably don't need to hear that from us, but be excited and getting to talk to him. Really, really awesome. And he's just enormous as well as just a teenager. It is really impressive to see. We're about to head to the game, last game while we're here, and we'll uh, yeah, try and enjoy it. All right, now headed to the game. Just wrapped up with Dom Canzone. So we're, our list is is getting shorter. Yeah, We've got almost everybody. Yeah, who have we not gotten? So we didn't get Julio yet. We can try one more time this afternoon. Not Jorge Polanco. Haven't gotten Josh Rojas or Matt France. Matt yeah. Brash. But like we made our way down the list. We're pretty happy with all the guys we've gotten. Everybody's been super cool this week. So it's been really fun. Now we're going to head over to the game, watch our last game of the week, and see what we find out there. Checking in at the final game. Saw a scoreless outing from our guy Taylor Saucedo. Jorge Polanco is a grand slam. Two total home runs today. I think he's ready for opening day. But overall, George Kirby. Uh, still spring training. He's still working some things out. It is a beautiful day out here. Oh my goodness. I'm getting the most tan I have been here at the game. I'm, I'm looking pretty good when I get back. Yes, you are. All the way back in that Corvallis snow. Mm, also, snow. Sh shout out Cal Raleigh. He's got a triple and a double today. Big dumper legging out a triple. Yeah, this is the warmest day we've had so far this week that we've been here. It's awesome. Environment at the game, especially on a weekend, is great. There's so many people out. And shout out to everybody that's kind of stopped us when we made our loop around the ballpark. All these people have been so nice. To everybody that's come up to us, we appreciate it more than you guys know. So thank you guys. We appreciate everybody that listens and we continue to have a blast out here. Hey, look who we ran into. Okay, Colton. Jorge Polanco, two bombs. What do we think? He's the greatest second baseman in Mariners history. No doubt about it. Better than Robbie? Easy. Better than Brett Boone? Easy. Well, you heard it here first from Mariner Mojo. Speaking of Mariner Mojo, go check him out. Go follow him. We have one more thing we want to do. We're going to go back to the facility, see if we can uh, get anyone, snag any stragglers. There might be some last stragglers. We'll see. We've done a lot today, a lot, but we're going to see if we can do a little bit more back in the back end. Well, here we are trying to catch stragglers. Uh, last few moments of spring training this time around for us. Johnny Farmello, our guy, just hit a home run. Let's you can go, hear buddy. it in the background, heard the music, and 
Congrats to Johnny. We're making one more trip over to Leo's Island Barbecue. We had to. It was so good the other day. We're going back a second time. We'll start to give our final thoughts on the week of spring training as a whole when we walk over there. But as we sit here, like TJ said, waiting a few more minutes, trying to catch a last couple of guys, see if anybody's around before we head out. What? It's over already? Yeah, that, that was a fun week and man, did it fly by. We did so much throughout the week. Like honestly, where our expectations were set, like. We had a lot we wanted to plan out and do this week, and we ended up doing a lot of it, which was really cool. I'd say the only thing we really didn't do that we had the idea of doing was getting some sit-downs with the guys to kind of just chop it up for 15-ish minutes at a time. We could have used it as some interview parts of podcast episodes, but even though it's more laid back in spring training, I will say it's not like guys have all the time in the world to sit down like that. So for everything we were able to do, it was pretty cool. TJ, we counted it up in the six days. We talked to 25 different people, minor leaguers, big leaguers, and Jerry, when you include him in. I mean, that's a lot. I think we did a lot, especially the, what, eight people we got today on our final day. I think we did a lot. Pretty cool and just so cool to get down here and see all the Mariners fans and meet all these people who come up to us. We're about to go eat Leo's Island for the second time on this trip, a proper way to wrap up this trip and really put a bow tie on the on the spring training trip. And this this trip here, you know, pretty much assured we're gonna be back next year. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, we're running it back. Yeah, next we're year. running it back. This is this is happening again. Man, what a time. Yeah, shout out to all you guys. Final wrap up. I know TJ just said it, but seriously, to everybody that came up to us, you don't even begin to realize how much it means to us. It truly, like TJ said, it makes us wanna keep going, but it's a really, really cool realization that like there's actual people out there watching this stuff. And to everybody who tuned in through these vlogs through, through this week, we appreciate you guys too, because we've had a bunch of fun making these. Side note, by the way, if you guys enjoyed these from spring training, please let us know in the comments because if you want us to make any during the year, we definitely can. If you guys are liking these and you guys want to see more of this, what we're doing behind the scenes, tell us because we are more than happy to make more. We've enjoyed making these a bunch. But funny enough for us, it's not exactly go back home and rest. Not only does TJ have a trek back to Oregon, but as soon as we get home tomorrow night, we've got a podcast to record with Aaron Goldsmith. That's going to be out on Wednesday. By the time you see this vlog, that episode will be out. A bunch of guests in the coming weeks that are going to be on the podcast that we're really excited about. Final, final spring training wrap-up thought. This is the best time of the year. I love baseball as a whole. I can't wait for opening day to get going, but this is such a fun time of the year, and I can't wait to be back. Next up, regular season.